Hi there, welcome back to English for Specific Purposes, Level B2+. Plus. We are your hosts, I'm Mr. Daryl. And I'm Ms. Tatia. We are your hosts, I'm Mr. Daryl. And I'm Ms. Tatia. So we can start, Mr. Daryl, but I think that before we start the lesson and this interesting lesson, I think that we have to look at our agenda. What's on our agenda today? Well, Ms. Tatia, as you know, we always start with an introduction where we talk about the topic a little bit. Well, that leads us straight into a vocabulary list that we, we will need to look at for today's reading comprehension. Once we're done with the reading, we are going to speak about some grammar and kind of wrap things up at that point. Plus, give you some homework. Very interesting. Kakwatils rogurt qawal twist tsira shesavli tawit qab chem tek shavis tawit axel sit qabs amas mokobat eksti romosat tawik itxaut chem tek anu xilat gramatikas amas mokobat savarji shabi chem tek shavaj jamun kakwatils rat konda tawas rulat sashina o tawalevit. Let's get started, Mr. Mm -hmm. Jarrah. Right. So today, the topic uh, of today's lesson is business, and I wanted to ask you. Have you ever thought of starting your own business? Well, it's an interesting question. I have thought about it, but I have never done it. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I don't know, I don't like the idea of starting a business. All the responsibility is on you. Yeah, I agree with you. I feel the same. I'm really afraid of starting my own business because I think that you are responsible to a lot of people if you start business. And especially I'm afraid of the process of raising money. You mm. know, I think that this is the hardest thing. So just um, I, I haven't dared uh, to, to, to do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah that, that brings up a good point. Uh, raising money, meaning someone else's money you're using. and. Uh, I don't know, I don't like the responsibility of uh, being in charge of someone else's money. If I lose it, if it goes, uh, if, if it goes away, well, what happens? Yes, of course, I agree with you because just you have to first of all realize all the responsibilities you take before mm. you start business. And I think that you need to have some kind of vision before you start and all the plan in your head. So maybe in future, or maybe one day when I'm mature enough, I might start, but not yeah. at this point. That's a good, uh, good way to put it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mr. Gerald, I think that we have to learn some words connected with raising money today and the ways of raising money, right? So let's look at our first set of vocabulary. So the first word we have is loan shark. Loan shark is a noun, and in Georgian it means mevakshe. And what will be the English definition of this word, Mr. Daryl? The definition of loan shark is someone who can lend out money to people in very large amounts, which then you've got to pay back. And the reason they give them the name shark is because it's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a dangerous profession as well. Um, and I think that the interest is really high with yeah, loan sharks. Yeah, the interest is really high, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And loan, sh and loan shark can be a person and a company as well, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, very nice. Loan shark, it's a noun, and in Georgian it means mevakshe. And here we have an example. Loan sharks target those with bad debt records because they may have difficulty getting loans from the usual sources. That's a very good example, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you cannot get um, a loan from the bank, so you can go to the loan shark, which uh, uh, charges high interest rate. Which is not recommended. They, it's not yeah. recommended to go to a loan shark unless you have no options. Yes, okay. Now, Mr. Daryl, what's the next word we have? Uh, the next word is pawnbroker. Pawnbroker uh, is a noun. And I'll give you the definition, actually, right away. It's a person who lends money uh, in exchange for objects uh, that they can sell if the object, uh, the person who has the object cannot get that price on his own. So uh -huh. they, can, they can sell it on, and it's a business, of course. Okay, thank you very much. Pawnbroker is a noun, and in Georgian we call it Lombardi pawnbroker. And we have an example here. Can you read the example mm, yes, for I would us, love Mr. Daryl? Money borrowed from the pawnbroker did not have to be repaid for 15 months. Okay, that's a good deal, I think, if you don't have to pay for 15 months. And the next word we have is collateral. Collateral is a noun, and in Georgian it means uzrun velgopa, seschisa da mistanevis, okay? Collateral. And how would you define that word, Mr. Daryl? 
Uh, it's property that's owned by someone who's seeking to borrow money, uh, and they use this in order to get money, to get a loan, for example. If they cannot pay back the loan, this is where it becomes important, the collateral is taken away from them. Uh, okay. Collateral. It's a noun. And in Georgian, it's translated as uzrun valgopa, seskisa the mistanebis. And here we have an example. She put up her house as a collateral for a loan. So mm. it means that she, she took the loan and instead uh, he just, uh, he or she just uh, gave this. The, his house, right? Yeah, so, they, and in case he uh, he's unable to pay this loan, they will take this house, right? Quite, quite dangerous, I would say. Yeah, what really? if you lose your house? That's what I said at the beginning, that starting a business is not an easy thing, No, right? not at all. Okay, Mr. Daryl, what do we have? Uh, I mean, what is the next word we have? Uh, it's mortgage. I'll give you the definition as well, uh, Ms. Tatia. It's an agreement that allows you to borrow money from a bank um, or similar organization especially in order to buy a house or sometimes even a car uh, but usually a house and uh, this is the amount mortgage is the amount of money itself the amount that you borrow okay mortgage it's a noun and in georgian it's translated as hypotheca mortgage and uh, i think that we have a good example for mm -hmm. that yeah they were forced to give up their home because they couldn't pay the mortgage is what happens when you yeah. uh, put up your house as collateral. Okay, and the next word we have is bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is a noun, and in Georgian it's translated as tweet uzrun Is it the case when you just um, try to finance your own business, mm -hmm. your own, on, through your own ways, right? Yeah, uh, the clue is in the name. Uh, what, it, what it refers to, boot strapping, is you put on your own boots and you tie on your own shoelaces. Oh, yeah. And in, in the business sense, it's when you, uh, the process of starting and developing a business, by you using your own effort and your own funds and uh, with no investment from someone else. So you're literally tying on your own boots. Doing your business yourself. Yeah. Okay. So bootstrapping is a noun, and in Georgian it means and here we have a very good example. His success follows the central themes, bootstrapping, ambition, and vision. Ah, that sounds very uh, uh, yes. successful. And I think that we have finished with the words and it's time to practice and find out how well we remember the definitions and the words. For this, we have uh, an exercise. On the screen, we will see the definitions and the words, and we have to try to match the definitions with the words. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the first sentence, Ms. Tatia. Yes, as you know, I'm always ready. You are, you are always, always ready. Uh, an agreement that allows you to borrow money from a bank or similar organization, especially in order to buy a house or the amount of money itself. And I know that because you told me that when you get a loan in order to buy a house, this is called mortgage. So, an agreement that allows you to borrow money from a bank or similar organization, especially in order to buy a house or the amount of money itself is called mortgage. Very good. Now it's your turn, Mr. Daryl. I will read the definition and you have to guess the word. A person who charges very large amounts of money for lending money to someone. Do you remember? We mm -hmm. talked about it. A uh, slightly dangerous situation, of course, to be stuck in agreement with a loan shark. And the word is quite dangerous. Yeah, the <laughs> sharks are dangerous. Scary. So, yes. A loan shark, again, the definition is a person who charges very large amounts of money for lending money to someone. Great. Of course, well done. And now it's my turn and I'm ready. Here's the next one. The process of starting and developing a business by using a lot of effort and no investment by outside owners. I think that is bootstrapping because you explained it quite well, how you do things yourself. Uh, and so the process of starting and developing a business by using a lot of effort and no investment by outside owners is called bootstrapping. <laughs> now your turn, Mr. Terrell. Okay. A person who lends money in exchange for objects that he or she can sell if the person leaving the objects does not pay an uh, agreed amount of money in an agreed time. Mm -hmm. 
uh, well, it has to be a pawnbroker, um, which I've seen quite a few of. Thank you very much, and I think that I have the easiest job to do mm -hmm. now. There is one definition and one word. Yeah. Valuable property owned by someone who wants to borrow money that they agree will become the property of the company or person who lends the money if the debt is not paid back is called collateral. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have finished, successfully finished this exercise, and it's time to move on to reading which is very interesting and which is con connected with raising money, I mm -hmm. think, for business. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we read the text, I think we have to learn some words. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of words that are connected to these kinds of different ways of raising money. So it's, it will be interesting for someone who's interested in starting their own business. Yes, I agree with you. So the first word we have is venture capital. Venture capital is a noun, and in Georgian we call it venturuli capitali. And how would you define that word? Venture capital, money that is invested or available for investment in a new company, uh, especially one that involves risk somehow. So it's, it's a risky option, and you're lending money for this purpose. It's called venture capital. Okay. Venture capital is a noun, and in Georgian we call it venturuli capitali, anu sa investicio capitali. Romelitz kan kutunilia investicis tu istakshira riskis shemtsuelia. So here we have an example. They need to raise one million dollar in venture capital for the startup to have any chance of succeeding. Okay. It's a large amount. Yes, and what is the next word, Mr. Terrell? Okay, our next word is marketable product. Now, marketable product, it's uh, a product that can be uh, sold and has demand for, and it, you know, it's something that you can easily sell. Yes, so marketable product is a noun, and in Georgian we translate it as motkhovnadi produkti, marketable product. And I think that we have an example. We have an example. Uh, marketable products are easy to sell because a lot of people want them. Now it's it's clear. And mm. what is the next word? Our next we word have? is connected to the, the word we spoke about earlier. So this is the person now, the venture capitalist. Mm. Venture capitalist, uh, the, it's a noun. And it is the person or company that invests the money. Uh, remember, it comes with risk. So he's taking some risk on himself. It's that person who does this. Okay, venture capitalist is a noun. And this is, we translate it as Metsarme Romelitz Midis Riskse Ta Aketeps Investitias, okay? Venture capitalist. And here we have an example. Venture capitalists seldom invest in an untested idea. Hmm. Uh, well, it's a good idea, I think. <laughs> safer, okay. though. <laughs> safer. Yeah. What is the next word we have? Uh, we have angel investor. It's a nice, nice noun. Angel investor. Uh, what this is, is a person who invests money in a new business in order to help it get started. Okay. Angel investor is a noun and in Georgian it's translated as investori. Romelitz abandeps pus kompania shiromis gan vitartes. Angel investor. And we have a, an example there. Yep, uh, the example is succeeding as an angel investor is far from easy. Of course it's not easy. <laughs> Okay, and the next word we have is drag on. Drag on is a verb, and in Georgian it's translated as gazelwa, droshi gazelwa. So, how would you define that word, Mr. Jerry? Uh, it can be anything that takes too long, or it's just kind of um, progressing very slowly. We say it drags on, and usually in a negative way. Okay, so drag on is a verb, and in Georgian it means gazelwa. And here we have an example. Negotiations have dragged on longer than expected. Okay, it means that they were unhappy with this fact that it took much Taking time, too much long. more time. Too much talking, perhaps. Yeah, than they expected. And I think that we have finished with the set of vocabulary. And before we read the text, uh, let's discuss some questions, okay? Mr. Jarrell, what do you think are the different ways of raising money to start a business? Well, uh, there's, a, there's probably a lot of ways. There's, you have to go around and ask for money from uh, people who have money. Yes. Uh, there, you can maybe, maybe make fundraisers as well. 
And perhaps in, in this modern day, you have those kinds of uh, Kickstarter and stuff, websites where yes. you can, you put your idea there and whoever likes it can donate money to you through um, their cards. Oh, and you can go to the bank, you can get a loan. Mm -hmm. Also, you can go to the loan shark, uh, which yeah. is not very safe thing to do, but right. just this is one of the options. And one of them is bootstrapping, just to, to do use it. your own resources to do. Uh, to start business but i think that it's t it takes too much time because generally you don't have much amount of money on your own so you start from a very small company and you develop in a in a very long period of time so it drags on usually the success comes after quite a long time right i will say that maybe um people who are businessmen uh, are a special kind of person. They have a lot of skills and they must have a lot of ability, I think. So they are a special and a successful type of person. Okay, Mr. Gerald, let's re read the text and find out some interesting things about raising money. So, the art of doing it yourself. What advice would I give to new entrepreneurs who need funding? Forget about your business plan and buy a lottery ticket. Your chances are better. My point is that when you need venture funding, no one will give you any money until you already have a marketable product. In other words, funding comes just when you don't need it. Hmm. Isn't that it's a bit ironic? Yeah. When you need something, the, th the reason you need something is the reason that they won't give it to you for. Yes. Okay, a myth spread by business schools is that the way to start a venture is to create a great business plan, uh, perfect your pitch, and then present this to investors, starting with venture capitalists. If that doesn't work, you knock on the door of angel investors. But ask any entrepreneur who has called on venture capitalists and they will probably tell you that it is impossible, almost impossible, to even get calls returned. If venture capitalists do respond and you are invited to present your idea, the process will drag on for many months while you borrow more and survive on hope. If you do hit the jackpot, you are required to let the investors make many business decisions in exchange for an investment. Okay. So let's move on. To be fair, most business plans don't deserve funding. Venture capitalists receive hundreds of plans every week and few are worth the paper they are printed on. Everyone jumps on the same new trend or the ideas are so far out that they have no chance of success. And great ideas are not enough. It takes experienced management, excellent execution and a receptive market. It's hard for even the best venture capitalists to identify the potential success. So what should an entrepreneur do? What all new entrepreneurs should understand is that even if you have a realistic business plan for a great idea that can change the world, you need to develop it yourself until you can prove it. Focus on validating your idea and building it up. So, so much depends on you. Um, your efforts. Of course. All right, raise money to get started by begging, borrow and borrowing from family and friends and be prepared to dip into your savings and credit card. Obtain second mortgages and perhaps look for consulting work or customer advances. There is no single recipe for developing your business idea yourself, but there are some essential ingredients. Here are some points and we have seven points. One, prepare for the worst. Second, start small. Third, choose partners carefully. Fourth, consult widely. Fifth, watch every penny. Sixth, keep your integrity. And seven, identify the market. Okay, such good tips. So, with a lot of luck and hard work, you may build a successful company that markets products customers really want. It's very likely that by this stage you will receive phone calls from venture capitalists. This is the time to think of exit strategies and decide if you want to own a small piece of a big pie or a large piece of a small pie. So much to think about. Yes, and I think that it was a very interesting text and it's time to check how well we remember the text and how well we have understood the text. Mm. So for that we have an exercise. We will read the statements and we have to decide whether the statements are true or false.
Okay, the first one is for you, Mr. Gerald. Can I just ask you? Uh, yes. So yes. I'll read this statement and you will tell me whether it's true or false. So the first one, venture capital is a good source of funding for new business. What do you think? Is it true or false, Mr. Gerald? Uh, no, I'm going to say it's false because I remember a lot of negative uh, issues with uh, finding money from venture capital. Okay, can you provide the proof sentence from the text? Uh, yes, I see it right here. It's come up. My point is that when you need venture funding, no one will give you any money until you already have a marketable product. In other words, funding comes just when you don't need it. And you're right. And now I will try, Mr. Gerald. Here's your sentence. Business schools give misleading advice on funding sources. And I think this is true because I remember we read a myth spread by business schools is that they, the way to start a venture is to create a great business plan, perfect your pitch and then present this to investors. Starting with venture capitalists, if that doesn't work, you knock on the door of angel investors. But the word myth just tells us that this is not re not a reality, right? Exactly. So okay. it turned out to be true. Now the next one is for you, Mr. Daryl. Mm -hmm. I will read it for you. Investors always respond promptly to funding applications. Mm, promptly makes me think a little bit. I'm going to say it's false. Yes, you are right, Mr. Daryl. And here's the text. I can see it right now. But ask any entrepreneur who has called on venture capitalists, and they will probably tell you that it is almost impossible to even get calls returned. Yes, you're right. It was surprising for me when I read, by the way, but unfortunately this is true. Okay, and the next one for me. The process of obtaining funding will proceed at a fast pace. And I think that this is false. Because I remember we read, if venture capitalists do respond and you are invited to present your idea, the process will drag on for many months while you borrow more and survive and hope. So this is again the thing from the text. And I think that we have finished with the text it's, and it's time to move on to grammar. And today's grammar topic is present tenses. We've learned present tenses, we've talked a lot, and I think that it's time to just revise it, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's start, start with present simple. Present simple is generally used for general truth, to talk about general truth, to talk about current habits, permanent situation, telling jokes and uh, other informal stories. Also, live sports commentary, newspaper headlines, uh, reviews and summaries, instructions and directions, proverbs and sayings, and the future for mixed uh, events. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few examples might be, for example, angel investors always invest in promising startups. This is some habitual action, something which is always like this, maybe. Or Adams passes to uh, Kareshi, it's a goal. Uh, so yeah. this is like sports uh, yeah. commentary. It's kind of right? reporting on what's reporting, happening. Reporting, yes. Or the negotiations start at five o'clock. This is a schedule, and we talk, when we talk about schedule, we generally use present simple. Okay, now uh, I think it's time to talk about present continuous. Mm -hmm. Continuous, yes, I will continue from where you finish with present continuous. Uh, this is used for actions happening now, uh, actions happening around uh, now, temporary situations and a series of actions, uh, changing and developing situations, Annoying or amusing habits, uh, usually with always. Yes, with the word we always. talked about it. Yeah, we did talk about it. I, did, I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, and the future for arrangements. Here are some examples. The managers are meeting right now. Right now. So this is happening at the moment. At this exact moment. More and more companies are going global in our country. Something's changing. Yes, that's a trend. It's right? developing. And uh, when are you meeting the investors? This is your plan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And now let's talk about present perfect simple. Present perfect simple is generally used for situations and states that started in the past and are still true. A series of actions continuing up to now, completed actions at a time in the past which is not important or relevant, Completed actions where the important thing is the present result and actions completed recently. 
And a few examples might be, I've been a member of Mensa for over five years, or she's done a BA or MA and a PhD so far, or she's been awarded a scholarship to study at Harvard. Mm. Okay, and the next one. Present perfect continuous. Uh, now you use this for actions and situations continuing up to the present or just before the present or for the future in time clauses. And here's an example. Uh, we've been working on the project since morning. Okay, very interesting. And I think that we have finished with the revision and it's time to practice. We will see the sentences on the screen uh, with the verbs in brackets and we have to choose the right form for those verbs. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, can I try? Can I be the first? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Here's your sentence, Ms. Tatia. Uh, my brother, and now you need a, a word, uh, a degree at the university, so I, and you need something here, him very often. Okay, let me think. So my brother is doing a degree at the university, so I don't see him very often. Mm -hmm. So it means that it's a temporary situation. He's just doing it for, for maybe one month, one, one year. And the thing that happens is that he doesn't, he doesn't see him very often. Yes. So in the first part, I have present continuous, and in the second one, I have present simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the next one for me, Mr. Gerald. Can I, yeah. can I try? So there's a space right at the beginning of the sentence and then it continues with over 18 press releases this morning so far. So I can see some indicators, so like so far, it means that just uh, I, I did something in the morning but the result is in, in the present. So I would use here present perfect and I would say the sentence like this, I have sent off 18 press releases this morning so far. So. Hmm till this moment. Mm -hmm. And you might send more. Yeah, I, I might send more till the end of the day. So at this moment, I have sent like 18 press releases. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the next one for you, Mr. Daryl, and I read the sentence for you and you will try to put it in the right form. So mm -hmm. we uh, then wait, and this is in brackets, so we have to find the right form for these words, for you for the past two hours. So it means that something started two, two hours ago and has just finished and was continuing till the present time. Mm -hmm. So how would you say the sentence? Uh, well, uh, the format should be in the following way. We have been waiting for you for the past two hours. Mm -hmm. And you're right, Mr. Daryl. And I think that we have finished with the lesson and it's time to wrap it up. So yeah, what did you, we do at the lesson? As you remember, we spoke about vocabulary, we spoke about the reading text and moved on to grammar. And the text was very interesting because we talked about the ways of uh, raising, raising money yeah. and starting business. <laughs> okay, and we revised grammar. It mm -hmm. was also very useful, I think. Yeah. And it's time for homework. Mm -hmm. So what is the homework for us? Uh, we'd like you to write a paragraph about the different ways of starting a business. So we're going to read very interesting things, I think. But where can the homework be uploaded, Mr. Darrell? Uh, excellent question. Uh, it can be sent to the address, the address you see on the screen right now. Okay, very interesting. Let's wait for, you know, for the answers. For now, I think that we have to say goodbye to the audience and yeah. wait for the next lesson. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you once more. So, goodbye, stay with us and keep on learning. Mm -hmm.